The Mayan frame? Metronomes in frame? Yep. Okie dokie. And then the mirror behind us is you when I get out of the way. <laughs> Hello, YouTube. Welcome to Mr. Natural's, uh, to Mr. Natural's Music School here in California, San Francisco, Haight-Ashbury District. Welcome to our live video. At 7.30 every, week, every Thursday, we will be transmitting this uh, show for anywhere from 15 minutes to a half an hour. And what I intend on doing is doing a small, short music lesson that will take somewhere between 15 minutes and a half an hour. And we're going to do that each week and we're going to follow a format. So last week I talked about um, the different elements in music and the things that we want to cover in this over the next six months. The first thing is to realize that music is made of three basic elements. It's made of harmony, it's made of melody, and it's made from rhythm. And each of those three things have to be studied and ear trained separately. Now, you can have music without harmony. You can have a nice, simple, plain melody that someone sings and have no harmony. You can also construct uh, harmonic relationships for, say, four trumpets and have a nice choral sounding harmonic something with no melody at all, and that's still music. But you can get rid of melody and you can get rid of harmony. The one thing that you cannot do without in music is time, or what we call rhythm or meter, as we're going to explain in here. Now the thing about time is, time comes from our body. It comes from our heart beating. That is why in a lot of people refer to it as a pulse. They talk about the pulse in music. And the pulse in music is quite literally my, my pulse. I've discovered over the years in working with people who are what we call rhythmic deaf, people who have no rhythm at all, that part of the, there's a couple problems. Problem number one, they don't feel their body. They have no sense of their own body in motion. The other thing is when they're trying to do rhythms or understand rhythms, they get too far away from their natural heartbeat. Every single person has a heartbeat that's running at a slightly different rate. Now mine, when I'm resting, I'm just gonna round it out, is about 60. So I have about 60 beats or pulses per minute, or one per second, roughly. So if I measure my pulse and I feel my heartbeat, bum, 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 that would be my tuned rhythm. That's the rhythm that my body is tuned to. Now, if you were measuring your pulse, our pulses would not be in sync with each other. And even if they started out in sync with each other, they would eventually go out of sync because no two people will have exactly the same heartbeat or body rhythm. So one of the problems when you're starting out is it's so difficult to deal with the feelings that are involved in rhythm that it's hard to lock into a rhythm when you're dealing with other people. So hence why people use a metronome to help practice. So they have an objective, undifferentiated guide to holding the rhythm. But one of the things I always recommend to people is that you take whatever your heartbeat rate is, feel your heartbeat, measure it, and then double that, okay? So my heartbeat and most people's heartbeat is approximately 60 pulses, between 60 and 72 pulses per, per minute. So if you take that and double it, that's 120. So on most metronomes, or if you buy a program and you open it up to write music, or you get something like Cubase or Logic and you open it up, it, the tempo or the speed is almost already set at 120, because that's normal. You buy band in the box and open it up, and it's always in the key of C with 120 beats per minute. And that's because that's the average for most people. Now, if your heart is going slower or you're hyperactive and your heartbeat is going faster, let's say it's going at 70, 140 beats per minute would be more normal for you. So the first thing to do is measure your heartbeat, learn to tap your foot, wiggle your body, punch at something, move your arms, walk down the street, do whatever physical motion you need to do in that tempo, in that pulse rate, and what happens is you'll start to sense and feel it a lot better and you'll be rhythmically more accurate. It's also why when you see things like 
uh, the old Dave Brubeck trio where his, uh, one of his sons was the bass guitar player and the other son was the, was the uh, drummer, and you go and listen to that, that old Dave Brubeck trio, those people are genetically locked in rhythmically. And when Dave decides to switch and go into another, into another rhythm or into another meter, the kids were right there. This is why families always seem to be able to lock into the meter together with each other because they can get their heartbeat in sync with each other. Now you can control your heartbeat by breathing. Breath will change your heartbeat. If you hyperventilate, you can speed your heart up. If you relax and take slow, deep breaths, right, you can calm your heart down and lower your blood pressure. So this is one of the methods people use for meditating or for chilling out to get rid of tension. And what that does is lower your heartbeat. So when you first start out trying to do things like that, your heartbeat won't vary very much. But if you get more and more involved in meditation and you get into deep meditation, you'll be able to get that heart rate to move further from its norm. So the ability to create a larger bandwidth for rhythm is what learning rhythm is all about. It's learning how to widen the bandwidth. The next thing I'd like to talk about is with pulse, we have what's called undifferentiated pulse. So here on my metronome, if I push this little thing all the way in and make sure it's wound up and let the metronome go, what we have is a little tick-tock clock. And if you listen carefully, you'll hear that every single pulse is identical and that it's happening at a very precise rate. So this is what we call an undifferentiated pulse. Now, the problem with an undifferentiated pulse is, um, well, let's say I was playing cello in an orchestra and we needed to work on a section in the orchestra and the conductor said, Natch, I need you to play note 3,872. Well, trying to count all the notes in my music up to 3,872, is a bit of a chore. So one of the things that we try to do is we try to do what we do with electricity. You have electricity flowing into your house and we have coming into the house a thing called a meter. And what a meter does is it counts the number of electrons that go through it in a thing called kilowatt hours and then they give you a bill for, oh, it's eight cents per kilowatt hour, it's 25 cents per kilowatt hour. And then at the end of the month, they can add up this metered amount of uh, electrons and then charge you for it. So in rhythm, we have the same thing. We have a meter that we can put on the thing. But in order to <coughs> have a meter, we need to differentiate the pulse. We can't have an undifferentiated pulse. We need to make one pulse somewhere in that pattern stronger and other pulses weaker. And we call this in East Indian music, it's referred to as passive and active or male and female. <coughs> they always accent the first beat and then have a count and then they'll accent the beat again, have a passive count, accent it again, have a passive count. And that count will break down to three simple possibilities. In meter there are basically, uh, well actually four, but we're going to deal with three. You can have a count of one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. You can have a count of one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. We can have a count of four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And if we make the first beat strong, one, two, three, four, one, two, four, one, two, three. We have now taken that undifferentiated pulse, we've differentiated it with a count of four, and we've created what's called a meter. And we're now metering this. So now the conductor says, Natch, I want you to go to page seven, measure five. And I can turn to page seven, count over to measure five, and there's my note 3,720 some odd notes later. So that is a real simple way of getting everybody on the same page and being able to jump deep into the music somewhere and find your way without having to sit there and count out, oh, 32,000 notes. Right? So meter is the way in which we differentiate the pulse. Now on old, this metronome is about 150 years old, and it has a little device here on the side 
which when you pull out, what it does is it gives you two sounds. And the one sound is the click click we heard before, but the other will be a little bell that rings. And right now I've set it for a certain count. Let's listen and see if we can hear what the count is. So every time we hear the bell, we're going to say that's one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. And as you can see that now the metronome is differentiating and giving us a pulse or a meter of two. One, two, one, two. Active, passive, active, passive, active, passive, active, passive. And that count of two is usually a march. If we're marching down the street, we're going left, right, left, right. I left my wife and 43 kids alone in the kitchen in starving condition without any gingerbread left. Those are the way in which in military school or in drum and bugle corps or in marching bands, they get people to be able to start off on the correct foot. They'll start with their left or their right foot, and then they'll be able to keep the count going of two, and they'll march down the street playing some John Philip Sousa march of some sort. Two is really good for marches. It's really good for fox trots. It's really good for certain types of dances, which we call two steps, right? But it is um, military in, in nature. The next thing is we can divide the meter into a count of three. So if I push this little button in here again, now listen. Active, passive, passive, active, passive, passive. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, in Europe, tubas and French horns have been used in bands for years to play things called waltzes. And these waltzes have what they call um, pa, pa. The tuba goes um, and the French horns go um, pa. So you have a um, Pa-pa is a beat of three or a meter of three, and it is referred to as a waltz. A waltz gives you this way of shifting from one side to another. You'll notice people like Ray Charles, many blind people when they play, they'll rock back and forth to get the meter, right? So what happens is if you're swinging or you're swaying in, in a count of three, you're creating a waltz feeling, the feeling of a waltz. And it has this light, floaty thing. Another thing that happens is if I were to start with my right hand and then go to my left hand and my right hand, what would happen is I would be switching sides. So I go right, left, 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 and you can feel this shifting from the right side of your body to the left side of your body back and forth. Any odd meter, five, seven, nine, whatever, they're gonna do that. If you start out marching on your right foot, you're gonna wind up switching to your left foot on the next active pulse. The next active pulse will be on the right foot. The next active pulse will be on the left foot. Where when we have even counts like two, it's always right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. It stays with whatever foot you start off on. When I was in my drum and bugle corps for 15 years, we always started off with our left foot, which was very unusual. So we would mark time and then step off with the left foot. All 120 people would do that at once. And then while we were doing our thing on the, out there on the football field, on the stage, doing our M&M, &M, our military maneuvers, uh, everybody was in sync in terms of the right and left foot. The other thing is we have four, a count of four. Now, again, if I pull this little stem here, the nice thing about the, this old thing. Now, electronic metronomes do this too. A lot of electronic me metronomes actually have two different sounds in them, and they'll let you set up a sound, something like, oh, you can have a clave for the one thing or a bass drum for the one thing, and then a click or a tick or a little peep or something like that. So you can go boom, peep, peep, boom, peep. And they also allow you to differentiate the pulse into active and passive. So let's listen to this one now. Mm. 
One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, it turns out a meter of two, a meter of three, and a meter of four is all you need to be able to count out most music. And we can put those meters together in various ways. The meter itself, the active and Look at that in a moment. But the first thing I want to talk about is what I call the art of the line, or writing. Now in music, if I take and have, or try to write, it would be, I would consider an undifferentiated pulse. There's a pulse, 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 there's one, there's one, there's one, and you can see what we get as a dotted line. Each of these represents a moment in the present, a moment in now. And as it goes on, you get this nice dashed line. So in music, what we've done is we've been taken this idea of a line going this way, and we've decided that this line is a timeline, and that this is where things start, and we move along this timeline until we get to the end of the piece. Now, when we're talking about meter, what we're doing is we're dividing this timeline up into smaller measured units. So we were talking about a pulse of two. So I can go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And if I emphasize the active beat here, what I'm doing is I'm dividing this undifferentiated pulse into a metered pulse, giving us a meter of, in this case, one, I'm writing upside down, I hope that looks like a two, right? <laughs> okay. And one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So now we have a timeline, and we have metered the timeline by creating these things called bars, and by having these bars cross the timeline, we're creating a metered or a measure of time, which in this case, depending on how fast or slow we're going, is going to be two. All right, I can create another timeline in which I count one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then what we have is we now have bar lines that give us a measured amount, which has the count of one, two, is that three, a three? Because it looks like an E to me. <laughs> one, two, three, et cetera. So if I'm counting one, two, three, one, two, three, if I put a bar line everywhere the bell goes ding, and then I count to three, I'm gonna get three evenly measured beats. And so these bar lines break up the meter, which is the count, into measured units. So we call these bar lines, we call this individual units measures, and the count that we're using is the meter. Again, of course, I can do this for one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Sorry about the pen running out. <laughs> we'll have to get some new ones. So in this case, the measure has four units. The meter is four. And every active beat where the bell's dinging would be the one. And then we would count three more pulses after that. And then another measure, another bar line for another measure, et cetera, et cetera. And this is the way we can differentiate into meter the timeline. All right. Um, could you give me a, an eraser right over there on that? Uh, in the next room on the, yeah, there should be an eraser there. 
So, thank you. This is my partner, Angel, by the way. She's behind the camera now. Sometimes we'll get her out here in front of the camera. Uh, so, now the interesting thing about meter is I'm not going to go into this whole number thing where it's 4 over 4 or 3 over 4. We're going to get to that later when we deal with uh, breaking the rhythm down into smaller fits. But I want to show you that using 2, using a count of 3, or using a count of 4, you can create as complex meter systems as you want. They usually use the, we're just going to, for now, we're just going to use whole numbers. And I'm going to say, if I want to count to 5, for instance, I can count to 5 by counting first 2 and then counting to 3. 2 plus 3 equals 5. And in music, what they often do is they'll put a little parenthesis here on either side and they'll put it over whatever unit they want to use as their unit of measurement, which we'll talk about later. And if you see something that goes 3 plus 2 over 4, that is another way of expressing 5 over 4, or what's called five, a meter of 5, 4. Now, I can reverse these, and I can have 3 plus 2. And when I do that, I still have 5. But now what's happened is the meter itself has created a small room. So let's count that. In the first case, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, two, three, one, two, one, 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 two, one, two, three, one, two, 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 generating a rhythm. Now let's turn that around and go one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. Now unfortunately I can't program this thing to do that, but there are apps out there that you can get on your phone that have the ability to put these meters together and generate more complicated rhythms, right? Let's see what happens if we play with this idea of being able to take the number two, the number three, and the number four, and add them up in different ways to express any number that we want to express. So let's see, we've seen that if we were doing something in five, we could do two plus three or three plus two, and that would generate five. Dave Brubeck's famous song, Take Five, is Ba da 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 one two three one two one two three one two one two three one two one two da 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 right so that's what he's doing he's breaking the five down into three plus two one two three one two one two three one two I could do it the other way around one two one two three one two one two three one two one two three if you do that you can't play the Dave Brubeck. Because the rhythm will go all hay haywire on you. But there are other songs I've heard which use that form of the meter in order to generate five. Okay? Let's take something like seven. Let's see. Sorry about that. There's a lot of different three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two. One three one two three four one two three one two three four one two three one two three four one two three one two da 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 and you can hear a rhythm coming out of that. Now what about breaking these guys into other units? What if I did two plus two plus three? Well, it's almost the same as that, but it's one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. Right? What if I decide that I want to um, try three 
plus 3 plus 1. One two three one two three one 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 and now I could play seven with that kind of analysis. Now let's have some fun. What if I do this? Three plus one plus three. One two three one one two three one two three one one two three one two three one one two three one two three Now I'm getting a really interesting rhythm off of that. I can take this and divide two, three, and four into any count I want. Hell, I could even have seven ones. And go one, 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 one. But now I'm turning it into an undifferentiated pulse, okay? But I can have some fun with two, one, two, one, one. Two, one, two, one, one. And I still have anything that adds up to seven can be create a meter, and that meter will automatically begin to generate rhythms. Now, let's look at something like nine. I'm drawing on my, drawing on my beard. Um, let's take something like nine. Now nine, I could do really simply as three plus three plus three. One, two, three, 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 ba, 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 Or I can, again, do any combination thereof. For instance, I could take one off of here, make this two, make this one four, and make this one three. Now I have one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. My teacher, Ben Olson, he wrote a song he called Blackjack. And what he did with Blackjack is he wanted it to be 21 over, well, actually, he did 21 over 8. What he did is he did 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. Plus, two more. plus five, and I think plus six, right? Yeah. Plus six. Is that six? Backwards. Backwards. <laughs> So it's one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, six, one, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then he found out that he could take 21 and express it as a bunch of fours. How many four does, fours does it take to add up to 21? Five. So if I have five fours, I can get 21. How about threes? How many threes does it take to get to 21? Yeah, seven. So I can, I can take and use it even divisions into it, and then if I have one left over, hell, hell, add one beat in there someplace. But I can use this meter to create complicated things. Now, to end tonight's thing, I'm going to show you something back in 1970 when I worked with William Russo, Bill Russo, the famous jazz composer. We were writing a piece for, uh, for a uh, rock opera that we did, and it was uh, Joan of Arc. And in Joan of Arc, we wanted to do something that was in 12. So what we did is we came up with this scheme. Three plus two plus three plus two plus two. Three, three is six, so eight, ten, twelve. And this was the rhythm that we used. 
And we did this over, we did it over eight, which we used eighth notes as our, so we had 12, eight. Now what happens is if you generate this, it's one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, See what's happening is a rhythm is being generated that's kind of a little jazz rhythm off of that beat. Now what we did to make it even more complicated for the bass guitar, we decided that against the meter of three, we should put, for those of you who know something about music, we should put these things called duplets. And we should have the bass guitar play two notes against the three. And then we decided that we would have three against the two. And then we put another duplet against this three, and we put another three, and another three. So you can see what happened is we took and inverted each of these. We put two beats against the three, three against the two, two against the three, three against the two, three against the two, and we got this cool bass line that went ba 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 so what we did is we had the chorus sing in four, four, four. So three sets of four equal 12. We had the rest of the orchestra doing three plus three plus three plus three, which also equals 12. So we had these three different rhythms going on. The chorus was singing uh, three sets of four, so it was easy for them to hold together. The uh, band was playing four sets of three, and the bass was playing this 12-8 figure. What happened is, I was conducting this, and I had to learn to conduct all of these at the same time. So what I had to do is go one, two, so I went one, two, three, four, 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 while I was going one, two, three, 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 one, two, one, two, three, one, two, with the other hand, and tapping out with my foot, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, with a little bass drum. And I got different parts of my body to do all three of those at once, and I was able to conduct the chorus, the band and the bass all at the same time. So this is how complicated something as simple as counting to two or three or four can be. And the bottom line is we also use six. I didn't mention it because six can be two sets of three or three sets of two. And that can also be broken down into something simpler, but you cannot break things down simpler than two, three, and four. And everything, no matter how complicated it might become, can be broken down into one of those simple meters. So when you're listening, if it's a very complicated count, try to see if you can break it down into smaller units and notate it as three plus two plus four plus whatever, all right? So that's our little thing on meter tonight. Next week, we're gonna start on rhythm and we're gonna learn two things with rhythm. We're gonna learn that hollow notes or any kind of notes which have are not solid are two or more beats, and anything that's solid is going to be one beat or less. So what happens is when we see solid notes up there, we're going to be taking a single pulse and dividing that pulse into smaller fractions. The pulses can be a single pulse or a single beat can be divided into two, three, or four also, and that will generate rhythms, which we're going to refer to as code words. And in these code words, we will show you how to use these code words in order to generate 
simple rhythms like this. And what we did is we just took a simple bomb. This is just a milk carton, which we've broken up. We put code word drum here, put the code word Tarzan here, elephant, and alligator. Now, whatever language you're listening to this in, you can figure out a word that's in your language that's a single syllable or two evenly spaced syllables. I can't say something like um, um, disestablish, disestablish. If I have a disestablish, disestablish. Well, that's not three beat, one beat's being emphasized more than the other. But if I can divide it evenly, like harmony, 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 or elephant, elephant, or triple it, triple it, I can find a word that generates those subdivisions. And we're gonna use those words as code words. And one of the things we do with the kids is we put the four basic code words and arrest on these boxes. You lay out four of them and you get a rhythm and you practice it and then just by rotating this, you can change one part of that rhythm and the people have to express it. And you can generate uh, rhythms all day long. So. Next week, we're gonna start on that, and we're gonna start again going back to the line, and I'm gonna show you not only how to hear and be able to hear these rhythms by using code words, but I'm also gonna show you how to write it down and teach you a little method where you can actually write out rhythms in real time. So until next week, thank you. We'll see you all then. Night-night. Love you, YouTube.